it's like an egg. Okay. And like ears. Yes, uh-huh. you have earrings. Yes, I do. You have, you're like Albert. And you have like side swept hair. Uh huh. And it's like a, it's like a ball. Whoa. Like, and then you're always like happy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. And then, I don't have blush. Well, I draw blush on everything. Okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to. I don't know what to put. You know, like Albert, <laughs> play cool well with me. And Albert's like in the corner. Oh, Albert has like the other side here too. Like, here's like a more like a this cup. No. <laughs> oh my god. I'm busy with Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's amazing. And you're like, pet hand. Oh, I need to Why? Alright, so we're gonna be drawing my life, guys. Jin has a very interesting life. Here, let me start with the baby. Whoa! I imagine when you were born, you were born with your hair <laughs> and earrings. <laughs> Baby Jude. Oh, that's so cute. Singing. That is so cute. I was not born with hair. I had very little hair. Oh, first of all. Okay, well this is cute. And then you have like little, like a little mini like baby violin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, let's start from here. This is a great drawing to start off. Okay, so. Okay. This is baby June. Go. Baby June. So June was born in on February 18th, 1993. Born in Seoul, South Korea, in oh, Korea. This is so like okay. And then Korea looks like Korea. <laughs> Wait a second. South Korea. This is North Korea. <laughs> yes, I was born. Oh, thank you for clarifying. A lot of I get that yeah, a lot. Well, yeah, you're North, North Korean. Korea I get that a lot. I get that exactly. a lot. Helping, thank you, thank you, thank you. The clarification is real. So when I was born uh, in Korea, I just had um, I just had a regular, I guess, Korean boy's life, where I just played around with kids in the alleys and streets on a daily basis. I never studied. I was like a little brat, and I didn't, I, I like never did homework. And then I would always do like I was always just run around and play outside with my friends and things like that. And I always got. I always got in trouble because I never did work properly. That was me. Fuck homework. Exactly. That was me. That was me when I was young. Uh, but unfortunately, um, I had genetic, uh, genetic, uh, what should I go? Because of my genetics, I had really bad eyes. So when I was, when I was five, when I was five, I had to put on glasses because my stigmatism was really bad. It was the same. Ex- my I was literally the same exact um, like carvings of my dad's. So basically, I had to get glasses when I was five, and that was honestly a big uh, downer for me because you know you're five years old. Come on, like. What's your uh, What did the glasses look like? Uh, s- like Harry Potter glasses, like circular. Oh my glasses! Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. I look blind. <laughs> 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 No, but basically I was like blind when I was five. So I had to get on, I had to get glasses at a very young age. And that I guess kind of like, that kind of toned me down as a person in general, just because it was something that I had to keep, like make a habit of waking up every morning, putting on glasses. It was really tiring. I was really small. Actually, can we, can we rewind back to when I was like two years old and my grandparents and my mom had like a really like, like they were very concerned about me. Oh, okay. Okay, rewind. Two-year-old June. June. So I had really short legs and really short arms. Oh man, this is gonna look. <laughs> so my my grandma and my mom was were very concerned because I had really like my arms are so short it couldn't reach past my head. <laughs> and my head was huge. Yeah, exactly. My legs are really short. Yeah, like that. No, no, no don't don't even put the legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, don't even put. Yeah, don't even put the legs. Yeah, there we go. That was that was me. That was me. So I had really short legs, really big head, and really short arms. And my mom and grandparent, grandma was like, "I am so concerned. Is he possibly? 
is that how he's gonna be when he's grown up basically so i had i was really small and also another thing was i just never ate um i would always run around like i said when i was running around and being a little brat my sister was spending her time eating all the food properly and like you know sitting down for a meal for me it was like i would take a bite and run away kind of thing so my mom and dad were like very like uh he's not gonna grow tall because my dad and mom were actually very tall for their uh for their generation uh he my dad was like six foot tall my mom was about uh five foot five foot four at the time so that was like very tall for their generation right so they thought i was gonna be super tall i thought i was gonna be super tall though uh but um i just never ate i just ran away from food all the time yes and my sister got the growth gene so my sister is really tall <laughs> Yes, that was what my family height structure looked like. Exactly. Okay, now fast forward back to after I got my glasses. So a lot of you guys know June with the violin, June Curry on with the violin. So before we even get to that phase of June Curry on and the violin on YouTube and things like that, I actually started playing the violin when I was six. So I took piano lessons and I took violin lessons both of those lessons I got kicked out because I was a brat uh, so let's start with the piano piano lesson so during piano lessons I would just not practice I would play really stupid things like just slam the keyboard and things and my teacher got fed up with me that uh, she told my parents he is never gonna be able to learn piano or any instrument as a matter of fact because he just does not pay attention he's a little brat so i got kicked out of the academy or not the academy but i got kicked out of the hagwon what's a hagwon in english academy academy right uh, academy in a sort of way academy sounds like very like fancy especially after boku no hero oh, you know but like it's not that big of a deal it's just it's like just a... it's just like a local shop mm. no not a shop but like a, a school shop. like a small like a day school right day school kind of thing right so i got kicked out and then i started uh the violin in first grade so not when i was six six years old but um i think six was when i was doing violin but i started in the first grade uh the first day of my violin lessons i cried because i couldn't hold the bow properly and my mom remembers that day and she said and she still tells me to this day that that's why i became good at the violin because all the other kids weren't even caring about the way they were holding the bow. They were just like, I'm going to make sounds. But I was so focused on holding the bow properly and I couldn't hold the bow properly. So I got frustrated and I cried. And my mom said that was actually like very, she was actually proud of me that, you know, like I was so focused on the techniques and things like that. But then that was short lived because after two months, I gave up. Oh. Not, not two months, like one month I gave up. Because my mom was like, this is not working out. And I was like, I'm crying. It. So the crying thing at the first, my mom was proud. And then once the crying repeated at every single lesson, uh, that's when my mom was like, you know what? This is probably not working. So I quit the violin and I continued to not really study. I continued to be a little brat and everything. So a little brief history about my parents. Uh, my dad is an architect and my mom is an interior designer not the type of interior designer like where you like you know like home decorating or anything like that like like actual architectural interior designer right so that's how they met kind of like uh kind of like country i don't know if you guys ever saw that movie it's a korean movie but that's how they met so we had a house that my mom and dad built that's where we lived and that was their career they had a company called architopia architopia and they uh, they basically designed houses, did interior designing, everything. It was a combo. It was a wombo combo, basically. My mom carried the family. <laughs> so that was our family. And the reason why we moved to America is because my dad wanted to pursue the architecture company uh, that he was working at a long time ago when he was in grad school in uh, Pennsylvania he had a job offering then and my sister was born in the States that's why he was uh, my sister is an American citizen I'm also an American citizen but we can get to that later so we went to America to mainly for uh, me and my sister's education as well as my dad's health and 
We moved in 2001 to New Jersey, which is a new stage in my life because Yes, that is accurate. I'm <laughs> I'm from Central Jersey, that little area in the middle that nobody thinks exists, but it does exist. Yes, Central Jersey. So, I moved to Princeton Junction, New Jersey, which is like uh, if you guys know where Princeton University is, it's like right next to that. So it's like a nice little town. That's where my mom and uh, my mom and dad lived uh, when my dad was working at uh, his architectural firm. And that's also where my sister was born. So my sister was born three years before me in the States. And then my parents and my sister moved to Korea. And that's when I was born in Korea. So, 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 so sorry about that timeline. Little mix there. So when I moved to the States, I barely knew how to speak English. I didn't know how to speak English at all. Like, I knew how to say apple. I didn't even know how to say hello. I only knew how to say apple. And I moved when I was uh, ending second grade in Korea. So I moved at, in like literally in the last month of second grade, I, I went to Wyckoff Elementary School. And, and, because I didn't know English, I was really bad at like all the other classes, like history, science, English. I was like, uh, what? Like I didn't understand anything. I would write down answers that were just sentences that I read from my English lesson book, which was like, like literally, I think the, I, I, I don't know, I don't exactly remember what the question was, but it was probably like something like, uh, uh, who was the first president of the United States? And I was like, I'm fine. Thank you. And you. Probably something like that. So that's pretty much what my assignments were like. But then there was that one class that I excelled at. <laughs> the teacher's face. <laughs> He's like, huh? No, so I was in ESL, um, which is like uh, like English for noobs or people like me, foreign students, fobs, as we call it. Um, but there was that one class that I did exceed in uh, Excel. Did I say exceed? Excel in, and that was math. Because I was learning fourth grade math math when I was in second grade in Korea. So like it was like it was like the kids were like, "What is one plus one?" I was like, "Huh, it's two, kind of thing, you know." So so during math class, I would get all the answers right and everything, because obviously I'm from Asia and we we're overachievers in that sense, right? So I was really good at math, so I was really happy. I was always looking forward to math class because that was the only class that my like my peers were like, oh, wow, he's, he's smart. Wow, yeah, exactly. And then move on to when I actually did learn English. I learned English through a TV program called SpongeBob. I didn't have friends. Uh, nobody wanted to be my friend because I couldn't communicate with them. And then actually there was a couple people that I like played with in recess, but then at the same time I couldn't communicate. So I didn't know if they were like actually like my friends or not, but I learned English through SpongeBob because SpongeBob is a great English tutor. <laughs> yes, that's perfect. So <laughs> I see. Yes, I learned English like Krabby Patty, what the Krabby Patty is and what a starfish is. Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Plankton, The Secret Recipe, things like that. And that's how I learned English. But it was really effective because it was a show that I enjoyed watching that I could relate to. I don't know why I could relate to it, but I did relate to it. And my English became better and better until I started getting friends in fourth grade and fifth grade. And let's just skip, I guess, a bunch of my elementary school life because it's just kind of like, kind of like, depressing so I almost died actually yeah, let's, let's, let's do that story in third grade I had a very very mean homeroom teacher oh my gosh oh my gosh I'm getting nightmares this is like an accurate representation of what she looked like okay so she was I guess not so like considerate of the fact that I couldn't speak English that I was you know kind of like that I needed a little more help than the other students because you know I was struggling so one day I actually, uh, she kind of, she kind of bullied me almost, kind of, not really, but there were times when like, uh, she just blamed me for things. Like for example, like this kid lost a pen and then 
she said I stole it, and that. And she reported me, and I went to the pre uh, the president, the principal's office, and my mom came, and I was like, I didn't steal the pen, and she was like, he stole the pen. He's a very bad boy. I remember she said I was a bad boy, and my dad got really offended. He was like, how dare she call my son a bad boy? I mean, I was a little brat to be honest. I was a brat, but I wasn't like a bad boy. I wouldn't say I was like a bad boy. There was this one day when I was sick, so I had a fever. I didn't feel that good in the morning. I told my mom, I was like, my head kind of hurts, but I think I'm okay. I can go to school. I was sick. And I told my teacher, I told my teacher, I'm sick. I feel sick. And I don't know if I said it like that, but I definitely expressed that I wanted to go to the nurse or go home. Okay, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't feel good. I had a fever. My head was hurting. My throat was hurting. I was like, I think I said something like, uh, I hurt me sick me sick yeah or something like that and she was like you're fine you don't need to go to the nurse's office or whatever so she didn't let me go she didn't even let me go to the nurse's office right so i came home and my mom saw me and she immediately knew she was like what's wrong what's wrong in korean and everything because i i looked like a mess right my mom took my uh temperature and it was a like hundred seven 107 for a kid that's like 10 years old 107 that's really bad that's really really bad right so my mom like obviously you know like asian parents she like stripped me down and she put like wet like cold wet towels on me and everything put that blast the ac on me and everything and like i took tylenol and whatnot <laughs> thank you for covering me <laughs> thank you for covering <laughs> <laughs> so I was okay and then I went to sleep that night obviously between my mom and dad because I was still a little boy and then and then in the middle of the night I remember the dream I was in like imagine like you know the game like um it's like a board game just like a giant like rectangle board game with like little squares that you have to block but in the middle of space so like draw like another like inline like this yeah 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 like that and then like little blocks so like separate them into blocks like yeah, 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 like that. Oh, yeah, oh my god. <gasps> okay, so I was standing on one of these blocks. And then, and then, and then there was this scary, like, purple figure, like a giant, giant being, like a, like a, like a space being that was just watching over me. Like over there. Yeah, 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 like that. And then I was walking towards it. Oh my god, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's so scary. But yeah, so I was like slowly walking towards that for some reason and I remember and I remember feeling by myself like I should stop walking towards that. I need to stop walking towards that thing. And then I woke up in a bathtub full of ice and water. Wait, why you <laughs> So the story, that's my dream. That's what I was experiencing in my head and then I just woke up. I just snapped out of it, right? So this is the moment that I really feel in my life that I almost died and my mom saved my life. Which is when, so when I was having that dream, apparently I, I woke up in the middle of the night. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was just making weird noises out loud, like like that. And then my hands was doing this. My hands were doing this. I was like, I was like, like cross-eyed and trying to connect my fingers like this in the middle of the night. I was literally like, like this and making really weird noises. And my mom and dad got terrified. So my mom was like, and then she took the temperature and I was at like hundred like 1214 or something so my te temperature like skyrocketed right so she i don't know what she was thinking but she had like this like super power like 10,000 iq or something she just turned the water on in the bathtub super cold got a bucket of ice dunked it in the bathtub and then just threw me in there she didn't throw me she like placed me in there and then i snapped out and then she said the first thing i said said in korean to my mom was like mom i'm okay i'm okay and then, and then, and then the ambulance came and everything. And then I went to the ER and then I was fine. I survived. <laughs> As you guys can tell, I survived. Yes, that's the ambulance. That's the first time I experienced American cops. <laughs> How do I explain that? Like Korean cops are like regular people. Like we're like regular people. I mean, there are regular people, but like when you call, when you dial 911 and call the like the ambulance and things like that, different cops show up. This was at like 3 a.m. in the morning. 
These cops were like, like six foot tall, super buff, and they literally came within 30 seconds of the call. Like literally like a minute. It didn't even take that long. They came and they were just like, what's the problem here? And then, and then they took, <laughs> yes, that was me. Yes, Korean cop, American cop. Exactly, oh my God. That is a striking resemblance of what the American cop looked like. Yes. So I was like, I was like all like stage fright, you know, cause it was like all these people are like taking me, carrying me. And, the, and then I went to the ER and they were all so nice and they like stabbed me with something. And then, and then I was like all feeling better. So that's my near death experience in third grade. Um, if any of you guys are planning to be teachers, if a child says he or she is sick, you should at least let them go to the nurse at the very least so that they can take temperatures and things like that okay but if it's a, if it's a student named will it's okay don't don't send them home because he's probably pretending to be sick okay so that was my third grade experience and then let's just skip a few years let's go to like fifth grade when i'm like fluent in english finally and i have a lot of friends and i have this best friend named harry his name is harrison He doesn't have glasses. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and then shorter hair, shorter hair. You can see his forehead. Yeah, that's Harry! <laughs> that's amazing, oh my god. Okay, so, so Harrison was my best friend in third grade and all the way till end of high school, he was my best friend. So he, we, we moved into the same neighborhood and then uh, him and his parents were out on a walk and my parents and I were on a walk and then they just talked, they were communicating and then, and then he came over and we played some like PlayStation games and things like that. We played with Legos and we became good friends from then on and he became my best friend and he's a great guy. And now the most important, he was a big influence in my life in a lot of ways. A lot of the things he liked, I liked and I ended up, my interest became uh, a lot of it became very similar with Harrison right and he played the violin now that's where the violin re-enters my life a lot stronger than the previous experience because this one comes with jealousy because Harrison would always come over to our play dates you guys remember play dates it's like when you invite a friend over and you guys play games and whatever why do you keep drawing a guitar or ukulele there's no, there's no hole in the middle oh, of the violin. Oh yeah, I don't know why I keep trying to, <laughs> trying to cheat. Alright, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Harrison played the violin. And for some reason, he would just bring the violin over to my house every time we had a play date. And I was like, why did you bring your violin? And he's like, I just want to show you the piece that I'm working on. And he would just play his violin in front of me like for like 10 minutes. And I just sit there watching him play. I mean, I thought it was cool. It was cool. But at the same time, I was like, why is he like, like cool story, bro? Kind of thing, right? <laughs> Exactly. That was me. And one day I went up to my mom and I was like, Mom, I want to play the violin because I want to be like Harrison. So that is literally the reason why I started playing the violin. Okay, so it wasn't really like jealousy or like I wasn't actually like mad at him or anything. It was more like I was inspired by my friend. I thought it was really cool and I wanted to be able to play the violin like, hey, like him. So that's why I started the violin in fifth grade. And that's how I guess this pushed my career all the way to here to this point so I started playing the violin and then let's skip fifth grade sixth grade does anything happen in sixth grade no I played Yu-Gi-Oh a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh do you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh Yu-Gi-Oh cards I was in a really big Yu-Gi-Oh card phase <laughs> wow it's Yu-Gi Yes, so I had those kind of phases, as as do all elementary school. Everybody does, right? Everybody had a Yu-Gi-Oh phase. Did you have a Yu-Gi-Oh phase? Um, yeah, I did. I did. Pokemon phase? Yes. Exactly. So we had all those phases. Those classic phases all went by, and now let's fast forward to just like in general in high school. I just played violin a lot. Like I was classically trained, and I just <laughs> keep copy paste the violin. So I just played the violin all the time. I practiced so hard. Um, at one point in junior year, senior year, I was playing about 
four to five hours a day uh, every single day and that's how hard I was practicing the violin and I guess all the practice paid off because by senior year I was um, concert master at Allstate New Jersey so in the state of New Jersey there's three different regions that's how oh, oh my god that's proof why Central Jersey exists because regional orchestra auditions there was always North Jersey South Jersey and Central Jersey <gasps> What is that? That looks like a scarecrow. <laughs> I had a face when I had orange eye highlights in my hair. Oh. It was kind of embarrassing. Yeah, yeah just like a few few highlights. Like fans of orange yeah, just a few. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, it brings back bad memories. Okay. So <laughs> So I guess I guess like my career in violin or like my my efforts in violin paid off in the end because I was able to finally be like recognized I guess as a violinist. And at the end of high school, um, I wanted to pursue, I actually wanted to be a violin performance major in college because uh, my violin teacher um, got me a recommendation for a school. And I basically had like a guaranteed uh, spot at a prestigious university for uh, being a violin major, uh, thanks to my recommendations and stuff like that. But I was thinking to myself, do I really want to do that? Do I really want to keep playing violin for hours and hours and hours every single day and I was like not really that's not that's not that's not what I want to do uh, just because just because I mean I loved it I loved playing the violin but I think I'm also the type of person to like really try hard at something until I get to like a certain point and after that I'm just like eh this is good enough let me move on to the next interest kind of thing so I just didn't. I just didn't really feel like I had it in me to be able to, because you know, like again, like violin is like a like a very prestigious instrument where it's not really. Yeah, you can be good at it, but then to get into like professional level, like people are so good on the violin. Like, look at Albert. <laughs> okay, but like, look at it, like like the professional violinists that we see like winning all these like worldwide competitions and things like that. They practice even more than I did and four to five hours yes I enjoyed it but at the same time it was really hard it was like really tiring but these people play like 10 hours a day and in college if I was gonna play like 10 hours a day like come on like I wanted to play games I want I liked Starcraft for example I was a typical Korean I played Starcraft 2 a lot uh, I liked going out on a bike ride with my friends I liked watching movies and movies that's where my I guess passion kicked in again where I wanted to pursue a career in film because I really like watching movies I really enjoy producing content uh, I want I and whenever in high school I was in like orchestra council <laughs> orchestra council exists I was vice president of the orchestra council um, so I like to make videos I like to make like um, election videos uh, whenever there was a video project in class like I really loved making video content and things like that back when back when it was like Windows Movie Maker and even PowerPoint I loved making like really interesting slides on PowerPoint I was like that one kid who tries really hard in the PowerPoint presentation you know what I mean mm -hmm. so like there would be all, all like most of the kids would just write bullet points in the PowerPoint and then that was me with all the animations like every single item in the PowerPoint had like a little animation, like a little sound effect and things like that. I was that kid, you know? So, but it was really cool. I mean, I, I enjoyed making that. I really enjoyed making those kind of things. And that's when I realized, you know what? I really like movies. I really wish I could make a movie like that or shoot something like that and be able to call it mine. And I was like, I, I got into it. I started, you know, producing my own like little short films and whatnot. And then I was watching YouTube. I grew up with YouTube. Wong Fu Productions was a really big, uh, big inspiration to me because they made a lot of those short form content that wasn't that popular back then. But you know, as you can see, what happened now, uh, it was they were they were ahead of their time basically. So that was my inspiration. And when college apps came in and things like that, I wanted to go to college. I wanted to go to UPenn. UPenn was my dream college. Cause why? Cause my my. Uh, U plus pen, yes, exactly. Because my dad graduated from U Penn, and my sister also was currently attending U Penn, so I had double legacy, and I had the same grades as my sister. I was like, "There's no way I can't get into this college." Because 
because everybody in my family that was like kind of like i guess like my my sister was always set the bar for me academically because we went to the same school we had the same exact teachers so all my all my teachers would the first day of school would be like jun an oh actually they couldn't pronounce my name nobody could pronounce my name also i was called jun in high school jun like pajun like kimchi jun uh because there was a girl named june june park in my class and i didn't want to have a girl's name so people called me jun i told them to call me jun yeah <laughs> jun <laughs> But um, my sister really set the bar high for me in high school because all the teachers would be like, uh, some people would be like, Hun An, because they thought the J was an H or something. But they would be like, Hun Jun, Jun, Jun An, and then, or like, Hun Sung An. And then I'd be like, here, and then they'd be like, An, are you Dorothy's li little brother? And I was like, yes. And they would always say the same thing. I expect a lot from you this year. And I was like, what the heck because my sister was a genius she's a genius she's still a genius she's getting a phd uh, in linguistics at harvard right now she's she was the she was the goal academically in my family and i was like the one that was like i really don't like school and i was so happy that i was graduating because i really didn't like studying so that's why i guess upenn was my ultimate goal because my dad went there my sister went there so i was like if i at the very least if i don't get into upenn then i'm a disgrace to this family because Asians and like high expectations or whatever but I early I early um, I did early decision for UPenn and I got rejected I got rejected hard I know I was waiting for that <laughs> 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 so I got rejected really hard and it was really depressing I remember I didn't go to school for a week um, my friend next to me we were checking the we were in computer lab and then we all checked the results at the same time like all 10 of us and six of us got in and then four of us didn't get in and i was one of the persons that got rejected and we literally just insta left the school all dejected and like sad it was really awkward because the other guys were like oh my god i got into your pen and then i was like what the heck so i didn't go to school for a week and but actually my sister and my parents were actually very very supportive they're like hey this is because there's a bigger reason why you didn't get here because this is not the right school for you. Life goes on and you'll get into a different school that you will love and enjoy. And I was like, okay, okay. I didn't do any other applications because I was so sure I was gonna get in that I was in a rush. I had literally five days to turn in all my other school applications because I was banking like 99% on this one school. So I literally had to do like, I think I did nine applications in five days so that was a little rough but i wasn't at school because i just didn't go to school for a week so it was a little chill i guess and then and then of all the schools northwestern was the first acceptance to send me a mail and they were like hey you want to be a wildcat i was like hmm interesting so northwestern is in chicago it's in illinois uh and I was like, that sounds cool. Yeah, Wildcat. Ooh. We did college tour visiting and I went over to Chicago with my mom and dad and we visited the school. It was so pretty. It was so pretty, which turned out to be a lie because that was the only day of the year that it's not cold and freezing and snowy. But I was like, ooh, I really like this school. And then they had a really nice film program and they also have a music school, the Beanin School of Music that was actually really like up there in the music school level so i was like oh i can probably still play violin and also do my film career here so that's why <laughs> <laughs> the violin <laughs> so that's why i decided to go to northwestern to pursue a career in film and communication studies and that summer i realized uh, i'm probably not gonna have that much time to play violin so now that's when that this is this is the shift when you guys get to know the june that was me that you guys knew that you guys know or at least you guys saw on social media yes exactly that's exactly the shirt i had that kind of looks like rip and dip so yes i still had glasses so i went to school and i started pursuing my career in film uh but right before i went to college actually i started a youtube channel gasp youtube is back so I started a YouTube channel because my friends were like, hey, 
this song would sound really cool if you played it on the violin and i was like really okay i'll give it a try and it was called lighters by eminem and they just wanted to see me play a cover because they're like because i always used to fool around an orchestra and play like random songs on the violin and that's how my youtube channel got started it was called jun curry on because we all have those lame aim screen names that you guys had i i, I remember jun curry on was my last one final one the good pun but i had um uh a z n capital a z n bacon no not bacon mudkip mudkip a z n and then capital b oh no, no capital m sorry mudkip yeah exactly the stuff like that you know back in the days when it was like xoxo like something that name carried on jun Crayon just carried on accidentally because i didn't want to be a youtuber or like be anything in that world so i just made an account and then that's how my name stuck because i never bothered to change it when i wanted to change it it was too late pretty much but I posted a video and then I posted a bunch of other covers that I liked and my friends saw it and then I forgot about the channel. And then I went to college, I checked my YouTube channel and then all of a sudden I was like, wait, there's like, there's like 30 people who watch my video. I don't have 30 friends. <laughs> that was kind of my reaction to the number of views I had because I didn't, it wasn't a lot. It wasn't like a lot of views, but at the same time, I knew that my friends couldn't have watched that video that many times. So I was like, random people are watching my video and then i started getting comments from like random people like from people from germany people from like brazil and i was like this is so weird this is kind of cool so i started posting covers every single week and by the second uh, the the second month of college i had a whopping 500 subscribers 500 and i remember when i hit the 500 subscriber mark i posted a really 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 like heartfelt message saying like guys thank you guys so much for subscribing i am so proud um thank you so much it's all your love and support that is able to keep me going and things like that so it, it, was, it meant a lot to me so during college that's what happened i just started youtube and <laughs> yes that was me i was like really emotional about it too so in college, I did a lot of things such as uh, play, uh, dancing. I joined the dance crew. That's where I started to learn how to dance. I did K-pop dancing too. And I tried to do orchestra, but it was just not my thing. And I was playing violin enough already for myself uh, doing the covers. So I continued my pursuit of film as well as dancing, as well as my YouTube career in the violin stuff. Is that me dancing? Yeah. <laughs> dance dance so that's me dancing and then at some point in college i forget when i think it was like sophomore year i lost the glasses Aww. i got contacts this was the start of my glow up phase or at least just no glasses because contacts exactly i mean i still wore glasses when i came home at night before i went to sleep and things like that but i changed i changed because i was like this is enough is enough glasses are too much Yes, exactly. Well, it was it was a lot more gradual. Um, for those of you guys who followed me for a long time, you guys would know. But the glow up was very gradual. It was a very slow process. Okay, it wasn't like that overnight. But um, and I, I don't think I'm still even close to that. Whatever Lily just threw. Okay, so uh, so yeah, my college life just passed by really quickly. Um, I was dancing a lot. I was making videos. Obviously, my production became a lot better on YouTube just because I was learning more about the film industry the film like directing producing all those kind of things editing everything so my content was just getting a lot better and my violin stuff was my violin content i would say quality wise it went down just because you know i wasn't practicing like hours like i used to but at the same time it was like a good base for youtube and i made a lot of covers i started getting into k-pop like uh, doing k-pop k-drama covers and then i did k-pop covers and whatnot and that was my college life and i at the end of at the end of college though i was too busy with my studies that i wasn't able to really keep up too much with youtube but by junior year is when i decided you know what youtube can be a career because 
I got invited to shows. I started, you know, making revenue off of AdSense, things like that. I was like, this is doable. I think, I think a career on YouTube as a musician, as a content producer would work out. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a try. So I made up my mind. And after I graduated, I moved out to Los. Okay, wait, we'll wait for this. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to... No, this is cool, this I is cool. I am a YouTuber now. I am a YouTuber. So after I graduated, I... YOLO swag, not YOLO swag, but... I moved to the Los Angeles. To pursue my career on the YouTubes. Okay. So I guess I did like three big city tour in America. Um, from New Jersey to Chicago to LA. Kind of like New York, I was like closer, close to New York, I guess. Oh, I forgot to mention, sorry, let's rewind like a couple years before I went to college. <laughs> so the summer before I got into college freshman year, I became an American citizen. No. I don't know why, but the government just reached out and was like, hey, you want to be an American citizen? Like, you want to take this test right now? It was weird because my, like, because I came in 2001 when 9-11 happened. So our green card application and our citizenship application actually got postponed five years. For five years, we couldn't apply to be a citizen just because we came on the same year as 9-11. So, we so I was an immigrant. I was a foreigner until that day. Yes, I cried. It was actually really funny because the citizenship test was like, the guy was like, the guy looked at me and was like, all right, are you ready? I'm going to ask you a question and you need to answer. And I was like, yeah, I know how to speak English. And he was like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be easy then. All right, first question. Who was the first president of the United States? I didn't answer. I didn't answer. I'm fine, thank you. And you, this time I answered George Washington. Jorge Washington. Going back to when I moved to LA, and I started my career on YouTube. And it was starting from there, this is like... This is the life that all of you guys already know. You guys know that I did a lot of KCON. Maybe we could just like make like a giant like collage of like things that I did. Like KCON, I did KCON, uh, where I actually met um, Albert uh, in person for the first time too. Um, I did KCON, which is like a K-pop convention kind of thing. It's like Comic Con for K-pop, I guess. I did a lot of KCON every single year since I came to LA. I did it even before I came to LA because I did a lot of internships and things like that. But um, Yay, that's Albi. I did KCON, I did a lot of K-pop dance covers. You guys know the BTS covers, things like that. So many covers, so much YouTube stuff. I participated in BGA, uh, which is a Boys Generally Asian, which is like a parody K-pop group, things like that. I collaborated with Albert too on a lot of stuff content wise. And yeah, that was kind of like my life in LA. I just did a lot of YouTube stuff, collabs, I hung out with a lot of YouTubers and everything like that. And that was three years after I graduated. Uh, for three years, three full years after graduating, I was just really into that kind of stuff. I traveled to a lot of countries, a lot of Southeast Asian countries, a lot of school shows and everything where I just performed all the time because that was like my career. And I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I really had a lot of fun and Life seemed great. Life was great. It was great. It is still great, but it was like, that's the life I lived. Kind of, I guess, because I, I wasn't able to do it um, in college because of my classes. I was finally able to kind of just do whatever I wanted to do, like take all the shows that I could and everything. The other side that um, uh, some of you guys already know this, but then there was the phase when I had like a falling out with YouTube, which was last year, 2017, when I kind of started to feel that doing covers and playing the violin was kind of hard. Like not, not hard, but like it was, it wasn't fulfilling for me anymore. Um, that's when I realized that when I realized that was at KCON Mexico, actually, I just felt like doing covers and being, I guess being recognized for someone else's work uh, didn't really feel that fulfilling for me. I didn't like how at KCON I was like performing another person's song, another person's dance, and I was getting cheered for it. And people were asking to take pictures with me. Like at KCON, I was treated like as if I was one of the K-pop idols, right? And like that came from Korea. All these kids that like 
work their life off to make these original songs and I'm just there covering their stuff but kind of still getting the same recognition almost at these events and that made me feel very embarrassed where I was like you know I'm not even like I'm not even that big of a deal like I'm, I'm just covering this on the violin like I don't want this kind of attention I guess it didn't feel right to me that so that's why I had the falling out on YouTube I didn't really feel passionate about doing cape like covers anymore on YouTube because I started it off as a hobby like I said I started it because my friends wanted to hear some violin covers of me and now I was doing things for the views I was doing I knew that I had to cover BTS songs to get like a lot of views to get a lot of like subscribers and things like that I knew if I did something trendy that I would you know like my subscription growth my engagement social media would do well and it became a business it became work for me and when anything becomes work for me that's when I like lose passion for it like entirely so I was like you know this is not this isn't this is not the life I expected this is not what I really really wanted to do so I had that phase and then I got out of that phase because I talked to a friend of mine, uh, his name is AJ, also friends with Albert. AJ Raphael. AJ Raphael. Oh, that's so cool, man. Yeah, AJ is re a really chill dude. He's really cool. I was performing at UC Riverside and um, AJ uh, AJ's over in Riverside area. So um, he invited us over, me and uh, Dan AK, Dan, my friend, uh, another YouTuber to just chill at his place and just jam. And we did like a little impromptu collab together because he's a musician he's really great we can do impromptu stuff so we did like a cover of the greatest showman i think uh we had a chat because i grew up watching aj i grew up watching his videos uh on youtube i was a fan of his before we became friends right so we talked about like this whole like youtube breakdown thing and he said he's felt the same way before and um he asked me a very like important question of why were you my fan then right so i thought about it I, I went back to my high school days when i you know like watched like david Choi, aj and things like that and i was like i didn't go to them because they were covering my favorite artist's song like it's not like i was like ooh, justin bieber's new song came out Ooh, this guy covered my favorite artist justin bieber's song that's why i'm gonna watch it no i went to him because it was like i want to hear what aj did with this song. I want to hear AJ's version of this song. And that's that was my mindset in watching his videos. And I was a true fan of AJ's work because AJ took the song to a different level. Uh, doing covers wasn't just about, you know, like the fame and the, I guess like the clickbait of that song itself, but it's also that person's rendition of it and how that changes the songs, like, I guess, like feeling everything. So that kind of made me realize, you know what, what I was doing, I guess at least like what people, like the amount of support I got, the amount of love I got from my fans was because, uh, you know, they wanted to see what the violin, what it sounded like on the violin, how it looks like when I'm dancing with the violin to the K-pop song or something like that. So it made me realize the value of what I was doing a little bit more. I made, my, I made myself feel a little bit better after that conversation with AJ. We had a really deep talk. It was like a two hour conversation where we were just really talking about life and YouTube in general and like our both our like feelings about like what we thought about YouTube and whatnot. And that gave me the inspiration to kind of start like, you know, loving YouTube again the same way, but it was different. The damage was dealt pretty much, not really, but um, even though I appreciated it and I found my passion for YouTube again and the reason why I was doing it, I found the core of why I started YouTube again. At the same time, I wanted to do something that I was going to feel a lot more fulfilled on when I performed. So that's why I started to do original songs. So last year, 2017 in November, I made my first original uh, called When I Call. And this was a hundred percent, I guess, uh, self, um, like it was like an entirely my, my, my project completely where I just, um, did everything on my own. I produced a song with a producer. I wrote the song with, with them as well as I choreographed, uh, choreographed, I can't speak English. I'm sorry. I still can't speak English as you guys can tell, but, um, I choreographed the song with my friend Franklin and we, I directed the music video. 
So this was kind of like a passion project. And the reason why I wanted to do this was because I wanted to make myself feel like I can do it, that I have the potential to be able to produce something of this caliber and be able to call it mine, be able to perform it and feel proud that all the cheers or all the support that I got on that was for me, for 100% for me. And that's, that's when I felt really fulfilled of that project. So that project, like, it means a lot to me. Uh, not only because of that, but also because I guess like another big stage of my life is right around that time uh, we had a very uh, sad, sad moment in my life when uh, my dad uh, last year, my dad passed away um, right around the time of the music video. And he was, I guess, my number one fan on YouTube, uh, definitely the most supportive person. He would always watch my videos like on loop nonstop all the time. He was kind of like the person I would call all the time right after I post a video. I was like, did you watch my video? And he was like, yes, I saw it like five times already kind of thing. Like he always knew uh, what I posted. Uh, he was always in like, he was super supportive. You know, like a lot of parents, Asian parents especially, right? Are like, are kind of like, you need to study. You need to go to business school. You can't do these kind of entertainment things or whatever because it's not a good career and whatnot. But my dad was like, he was like all for it. He loved it. He would like brag to his friends at work. Like, you know, every time I post a video, he would send a mass email thread out to all the all his coworkers saying, my son posted a new video. You guys should watch it, support it kind of thing. So he was like a really big inspiration to me to keep on going on this career YouTube wise because no matter what, I had somebody that was always gonna support me till the end. And when my dad passed away, that was a very big, 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 like, uh, I guess like chunk taken out of my life. And when I call actually that project, I was in the middle of editing, like producing it when he passed away. And I wanted to go home to Jersey right away and see him and everything. But he told me to stay. He told me to stay and finish the project because I need to be in LA to finish the project. So he told me to stay. So I did, I tried to stay for as long as possible, but then things got worse. So I gave up the project actually. And I, I flew like directly to New Jersey and everything. And unfortunately I didn't make it in time. Uh, so that I guess is like a big regret on my part in my life because it just, it just came so suddenly. Like it was like, my dad was sick for a long time, but it was a very sudden impact in like my family's life because we never saw it coming because he never, he was never the type of person to kind of, I guess like kind of express his pains or concerns or anything. He was always like kind of thinking of us first rather than uh, like himself. So, so yeah, but then uh, my mom and my sister and we talked about it and we decided you know, my dad wanted me to stay in LA because he wanted to see the project finish. So even during that time, uh, even though I was like, kind of like, you know, obviously not in the proper state to do anything, I got all my files back from LA or I got it sent to me and I finished the music video and I posted the video on the day that I promised that I was going to post it. And yeah, and I kind of forgot about it. I really forgot about that video because I posted it and then like honestly like you know like the pat the next like few months was just not really focusing on anything so yeah so last year was really rough for me because i had a big breakdown on youtube i had a big family uh issue as well as just yeah just overall last year was pretty bad for me i guess but it all came back because we got together my mom's a really strong person so is my sister so am i i guess um Things have changed because I kind of became, I guess, the primary figure in my family now. So I have a lot more responsibilities, which is making me wonder how my dad did it, how my dad even did it, because bills, taxes, uh, everything is hard. Life is hard. Adulting life is hard, especially supporting a family is hard. It's not, it's not an easy task. So I was, so it made me appreciate and value that kind of things a lot more. And now I understand what he went through, how stressed he must have been like his entire life, like with us, especially with a bratty child like me. Um, my sister was great. She was smart, so it's fine. But I was the bratty one. But yeah, so this year, most majority of this year has been just kind of catching up on my life 
making sure everything was organized and settled for my mom and my sister so that they could continue whatever they were doing so that I could continue whatever I was doing. And yeah, so kind of to return to our normal lives, but of course without my, of course without my dad. And uh, we definitely got pulled together because we're strong and we communicate a lot. We're a very family oriented uh, family in the first place. So we stayed very close to each other, supportive, communicated all the time. By then, uh, by the time everything was kind of, I guess, slightly back to normal, uh, I started to do, I decided to look back on When I Call, and I looked at When I Call, and I was like, oh wow, the reviews, uh, or like the response on this video was actually really great. Um, people actually really enjoyed this video, um, and I was very happy of the turnout. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do another single and that's when i did the project hold it down of course in between these songs there was covers there was video content that i made obviously i just wanted to uh i guess yeah i guess like i really i really wanted to just show everybody that i'm doing okay so i posted a lot of videos i i made sure i was um active on social media still because i didn't want to i guess like kind of like expose like how difficult I guess my life was in like the past like year so I kind of just like just kept myself busy I did a whole university school show tour from February to May I literally had no weekends free from February to May just because I was just doing school shows back to back to back and I just kept doing work I just did not stop at anything I did all the brand deals I could do, all the university school shows I could do, all the videos, vlogging even. I even tried to do vlog vlogging. And I started streaming too. And actually the reason why I started streaming or I decided to take on streaming is because gaming, I would never have been introduced to gaming without my dad. Because my dad, when we moved to the States, when I was, you know, when we were in second grade, he bought me a PS2 because he knew I couldn't speak English or hang out with friends. So he was like, he needs to have something to do when he's just playing. So he got me a PlayStation 2. So I would never have learned how to game unless it was for my dad and also my dad was always the one talking about like me doing shows my youtube content being supportive of me so i took it as kind of like a message from my dad you know like kind of like here take all these shows do 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 all these shows perform all these shows and also since you love to game you should game and also make it a career so that you can stream and do something that you like such as gaming so i was like i took it as a sign i took it as like kind of like a message so i decided to stream that's actually the reason why i decided to stream i was always against it because i didn't think i would have enough times and things like that um albert always tried to convince me to stream um but i was always like eh, I'm, I'm like i'm not too sure i'm not too sure but then but then i thought about it and that's how i started streaming so I kept myself really busy, and then I did Hold It Down, which was my second single, which Lily showed the little uh, image earlier. Uh, it was another song. This time around, though, I let other people handle a lot of the production, a lot of the writing, a lot of the, uh, which, what, what, what should I call it? Like, yeah, I let a lot of other people handle it for the first time. I'm always kind of like the person that like hogs all the roles in a production, and I would like control everything because I like I don't like it when other people handle something I know I can do better kind of thing so it was kind of hard for me but hold it down turned out really nice so I guess I kind of realized that when people are professional at something it's because they are professional at something and uh, I think an important lesson in life is you don't like you you can be really good at something but you don't have to be really good at everything you should be uh, it's a saying that I heard from somebody and it's really stuck with me it's jack of all trades master of none ooh so fancy quote it's a common quote well to me <laughs> person who learned english from spongebob it was not a common quote and that really meant a lot to me because it's like that's so true like you know like i know how to do everything i know how to edit i know how to shoot i know how to color correct i know how to record music i know how to produce music i know how to dance i know how to like i guess do a lot of different things but i wasn't like perfect at any of those things i know how to draw but can I draw like Lily? No, I can't, exactly. So helping is okay when you get help from people. Like if I did to draw my life on my own, uh, it would be terrible. It would not be this amazing. This drawing is like, like, <laughs> again, I'm really proud. I'm, I'm, I'm not, not proud, did I say proud? I'm really amazed, Lily, at your drawing skills. It's actually really amazing. 
Wow. Yes, that's me. Reaction to Lily drawing. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, yeah, so that kind of brings us to present day June where uh, I finished Hold It Down and I just have been streaming for like the past couple months and I'm working on a new song. Working on a new song. Uh, I don't know what it's called yet, but spoiler alerts. I guess like future wise, I want to definitely build my streaming community because um, I really like streaming because everybody on streams, like, you know, like when Albert rated me, for example, Albert's viewers, uh, like all the viewers watching right now, everyone's really nice and they all understand you. They all really listen to you. And I feel, and I think, I think going to TwitchCon really like set my goals to become a streamer because uh, seeing some people at Twitch, like seeing fans at Twitch was a completely different experience from seeing fans at KCON. Not that the fans at KCON are bad or anything like that. I respect and value all my fans and all my supporters, but definitely the vibe is a little different. Where at TwitchCon, people really know you. Like uh, the streaming fan base, everybody like actually knows you. Do you, do you feel that way too? Really? Oh, yeah. Right, right. So because because we are streaming like our lives away pretty much like all day all the time, like they don't feel like fans. They feel more like people that are just part of my life almost. So like and like for example like Justin, Gabby, Cloud. Like I met all the mods over at TwitchCon too, and it didn't really feel awkward at all. I just felt like I was just talking to friends that I always talk to all the time, right? So actually, Justin was kind of weird. Justin was kind of weird, right? Justin's weird. Gabby was cool. Cloud was cool. Justin was kind of weird. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Justin. But um, uh, so definitely building the streaming community because I really love the community. I really love the engagement, the interactions that I have with my fan base on the streams. Uh, next, working on my original songs. Uh, definitely have a single coming out soon. I'll keep you guys updated on that. But again, that's like I'm keeping the music and streaming, like the streaming world and my like, I guess, June branding world, I'm keeping a little bit separated uh, for a good reason because like streaming community, like I just want to be myself and the June branding, I just want to be June branding, like June, you know, like like the cool, quote unquote, cool June, <laughs> maybe, uh, but uh, no, actually, no, I'm, I'm actually cool all the time. I'm always cool, right, Lily? Really? Okay, we have two more. Third, I just want to be able to pursue my career in film too. Definitely start directing, producing more content. And then lastly, I want to play League of Legends with Albert. <laughs> I really want to play League of Legends with Albert for, for once, for once. Never plays with me now. But yeah, that's my, that's my to-do list in 2019. Definitely want to play with Albert. Uh, I actually really want to play League of Legends really well. Like I, my goal in 2019, the next season, is to get to Master League at the very least. Actually, at the very least, I want to get to. Oh, he's saying no again. <laughs> I want to get to at least like Diamond One, Diamond One, Diamond One is my ultimate goal. If I can get past that, amazing. If not, Diamond One. That is the, that is my goal for League of Legends. And. Anything that we're missing? I think that is my life. That is my life and my future. Wow, Lily, high five, thank you. No problem. That's amazing. That's actually really amazing how you drew all that. This is amazing. This looks amazing. Yay, we, we, I learned so much about his life too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Wait, it's so cool. How do you do that? Why are you so you just put a, It's literally... You just put a glare. You just put a glare standard, on my hair, like lighting. It just went even lower. No, you just, you just lit myself. You just lit my face. How do you do that?